Hello, my name is Gabby and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here then welcome to my channel and today's video is going to be the mid-year book freak out tag because I am actually present and aware of the mid-year this time around. I will link the original creators of this tag down in the description below so please go ahead and check them out if you have not already. And then also down in the description below will be some content warnings for all of the books that I talk about in this video. We're also going to start off this video with some stats and then we're going to go right into the tag. But before we get into this video, I do just want to thank you all for the support on my channel. We recently just passed 100 subscribers here and I am just incredibly thankful for every single one of you. So I got all of my stats from Storygraph for this first part of the year because I really do love all of the stats that they give. And according to Storygraph, I have read 25 out of the 51 books that I have set out to read this year. And it says that it's 8,910 pages, which seems like a lot. 40% of the books that I read were less than 300 pages, 16% were over 500, and the other 44% were somewhere in between. And the moods of my reads have mostly been lighthearted hearted, adventurous, hopeful, and emotional. 40% of the books that I read have been fast-paced, and 40% have been medium-paced, and 20% have been slow-paced. My top five genres are young adult, LGBTQIA+, romance, contemporary, and fantasy. 88% are fiction, and 12% are non-fiction. And my most read author is Alice Oseman, because heart stopper. <laughs> And finally, my average rating, which I just did myself because I didn't put any of my ratings in the story graph for some reason. But my calculation does say that that average rating is roughly a 4.23. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the tag. So the best book that I've read so far in 2022, which was a lot easier than I thought it would be to pick a book for, but when I looked at all of the books that I've read so far this year, this book actually stood out pretty clearly, and that is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. So this book includes a lot of elements from a ton of stories that will be listed over on the side of the screen here. And it follows our main character, Shiori, who has a secret forbidden magic, and before her betrothal ceremony, she loses control over this magic. And although she has successfully stalled the wedding that she does not want, she draws the attention of her sorceress stepmother. I just fell completely in love with this story, like, immediately, and I got so incredibly lost in it. There are so many beautiful and interesting concepts and storylines, it even got me excited for things that I didn't even think that I would enjoy, but this made me love them. And I don't know how the rest of my reading year is going to go, but I do definitely feel in my heart that this book is for sure favorite book of the year material, and we'll see where it ends up by the end of the year. So next up is best sequels that I've read in 2022, and we're going to go through these kind of quickly because I have three that I want to talk about, and then one we'll get to a little later on, so I'll just save that one for then. So first off is The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty, which is the sequel to The City of Brass. The City of Brass follows our main character who accidentally summons a djinn during a con and is forced to come to terms with the fact that magic is actually real even if she didn't believe in it beforehand. This is just one of my favorite series ever, and it's also one of the only other two books that I've read this year that have immersed me in its story like Six Crimson Cranes has. And I am just so addicted to like everything about it, which is definitely a good thing because the series is very long, but we are slowly but surely making our way through it. So next up is Heartstopper 2 and 3 and probably 4 very soon. So Heartstopper follows the story of our main character Charlie who is an openly gay high school student and he's kind of like the high strung overthinking type. And then this also follows our main character Nick who is like a cheerful and soft hearted rugby player. These two become friends very quickly once they meet and Charlie is falling hard for Nick but he just is not sure if he has a chance. I love these characters and these relationships and all of the joy that they bring to me because they just make my heart feel so happy and safe no matter how many serious topics they cover. And I am going to go put these two books back now before that happens again because it is probably going to happen again. And the final sequel that I am going to be talking about for right now is The Shadow of Kiyoshi by F.C. Yi. This takes place in the Avatar The Last Airbender universe and follows the story of Avatar Kiyoshi and her journey of how she became the person that she is known for throughout the series. 
So I love this sequel because it gave me the experience that I craved when I read book one and unfortunately did not have a great time with even though I definitely should have due to like a terrible reading slump. And I'll end up talking about this book more in detail during my June wrap up but I am just incredibly grateful for this. So next is new releases that I haven't read yet but that I want to read. And I do have two for this one. The first one is Book of Night by Holly Black, which I believe is Holly Black's adult debut. I haven't heard great things about this, honestly, but it is Holly Black, so I want to give it a try anyway, because I love the Folk of the Air series, and we'll just see how it goes. I actually don't think I know anything about this book, so this should be an interesting experience. And the next new release is Fevered Star by Rebecca Roanhorse, and this is the sequel to Black Sun. Black Sun is inspired by the civilizations of the pre-Columbian Americas. It takes place in a city called Tova around the time of the winter solstice, which is usually a time for celebration and renewal, or it would be, but the solstice this year is around the same time as a solar eclipse, which according to the sun priest signifies an unbalancing of the world. At the same time, a ship begins its adventure toward Tova, carrying a seemingly harmless passenger, but the captain does have her suspicions of him. So Black Sun was one of my favorite books that I read last year and I just need to know where everything goes and I am so glad that that is finally possible and that this book is in my hand right now. And it is on my June TBR so I really do hope to read it soon although the month is ending very quickly. So next is my most anticipated new release for the second half of the year. I do not really keep up with new releases anymore because I find it stressful. But then again, I also find it stressful when the new releases that I want to read come out and I find myself just like surprised by their existence. But a book that I am completely aware of and just like patiently but not patiently awaiting is the release of The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lim, which is the sequel to Six Crimson Cranes. It comes out on August 30th. It has a really Really beautiful cover which I'm not surprised about but I do love it and I've heard it's love triangle heavy which could not be a great thing for me but honestly if anyone could get me into that it is probably Elizabeth Lim just based on how everything went in the first book and I am just so excited for it to come out so for my biggest disappointment, this one is a little bit weird because I love this book, but I also don't have like a specific book that I overall found disappointing. But what I was really disappointed by was the ending of Strange to Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Strange to Dreamer follows our main character who has been obsessed with the lost city of Weep since he was five years old. However, he believes that he is not the correct person for this dream to have chosen as he thinks that he is not bold enough. However, when a legendary god slayer and warriors present him with the opportunity, he finds himself with the chance to either seize his dream or lose it forever. So I'm not going to go into like specifics here because spoilers, but I just didn't love the way things went and it did things that I expected but don't really enjoy because I never really enjoy when these types of things happen in general. And I just didn't think it matched from what I knew from the rest of the book. I don't know, it's hard to talk about vaguely because it's a very specific thing, but it makes me nervous to read the sequel no matter how much I love the rest of this book. And on that note, my biggest surprise was also Strange to Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. And that is because I did not enjoy the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, and I was very shocked by that because I just did not get what everyone else loved, and I wish that I did. So I was very concerned going into this book that that would happen again, but with this book, I definitely did get it, and I love that. Minus most of the ending, not all of the ending, but most of it. Other than that, this is another book that I got super invested and immersed in, and there was just a ton of beautiful moments and attention to detail, and I really enjoyed almost every single moment that I spent with it. So next is my new favorite author, either a debut or just new to me. And I am going to go ahead and list three here. Once again, we do have, that is, that's not the order. Once again, we do have Elizabeth Lim. I just hauled Spin the Dawn like a week or two ago, and I'm just so excited to read like all of this author's stories for as long as they exist. And then I also read Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers this year, and this is a debut that definitely got me excited for more from this author, for sure. And then I also read Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron, and I really want to read this author's other book, This Poison Heart, very soon, because I feel like this author just has some amazing concepts that really resonate with me, this book included, and especially This Poison Heart. So next up is Newest Fictional Crush, and this question is always hard for me, but I do think I have an answer because Yuki from Honey Girl 
just said some things that really worked for me and that I could see like wanting for myself one day in the future. So next up is newest favorite characters and I do have two here. The first is Ben from I Wish You All the Best. Ben in this book goes through some really difficult and terrible things and I feel like I really got to know them and got invested in them. And then they also just said things that felt relatable and they also have some really fun dialogue. And speaking of fun dialogue, my other new favorite character is Ishu from Hani and Ishu's Guide to Fake Dating. I just really gelled with her right away and she has like this dry sarcastic thing going on and a personality that just really resonated with me and I was always excited for her chapters of this book and she just made me smile a lot. So next is a book that made me cry and if I filmed this video any earlier I may not have had an answer for this. But Aristotle and Dante dive into the waters of the world did cause some tears this time around. This is the sequel to Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe and this follows two boys who are really opposite of one another, however they develop a special bond when they meet. And this bond ends up helping them grow into who they want to be as individuals and also helps them learn like the most important truths of their lives. So like I said, I just finished this book the other day and I don't think my mind has fully processed my thoughts on it yet, which I hope happens soon because the month's almost over and it's almost wrap up time. So I'm going to need to figure that out quickly, but I will say I loved how much time I got to spend with these characters because it just felt like I was following a section of their lives. And the level of attachment that I developed and just like the way the story is told really got to me. <laughs> There is a very specific point where it got to me, but again, spoilers, not gonna go into it, but it did happen and it was there. As for books that made me happy, I already mentioned the Heartstopper series, so I am going to go with something different and go with Bloom Into You. Bloom Into You follows our main character who is a big fan of shoujo manga and has always dreamed of the day when she would receive a confession of her own. However, when that day comes from one of her male classmates, she ends up feeling nothing. She enters high school still unsure of how to respond, but gets inspired when she sees a student council member turn down her own suitor, so she goes to ask her for advice. Our main character's romance may have finally begun, however, when the next confession she receives comes from that student council member herself. So I thought the light novel had some really heartwarming moments and volume one of the manga had some nice and sweet comedy to it. Just like moments that overall made me smile. I have only read these two volumes so far, but I definitely want to like interact with everything this series has to offer from manga to anime to light novel, everything. And while we're on the topic of manga, I am also going to go with volume 18 of Haikyuu. It's mostly just like Haikyuu in general for this answer, but volume 18 is the one that I read this year. Haikyuu follows our main character who wants to be the best volleyball player ever despite being on like the shorter side of height things. This series just never fails to make me incredibly happy and it's one of my favorite things ever. It has such amazing characters and comedic moments and also just a lot of heart and I love it so 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 much. Okay so next are the most beautiful books that I have bought or received this year and I am just going to go down this list very quickly because I have a huge weakness for pretty books. Aristotle and Dante Dive into the Waters of the World, Book of Night by Holly Black, Volume 1 of Hell's Paradise by Yuji Kaku. Views of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. Redemptor by Jordan E. Fuego. So This Is Ever After by F.T. Lukens. Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. The City Beautiful by Aiden Polydoros. And finally, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. And the last prompt for this tag is a book that I need to read by the end of the year, and I honestly have no idea, and all of the books that I want to name are already on my June TBR, and those are like the fevered stars and the this poison hearts of the world. But otherwise, I have been really wanting to read A Song of Wraiths and Ruins by Roseanne A. Brown for a while now. So this is a fantasy that is inspired by West African folklore, and it follows a princess and a refugee who have this growing attraction towards one another, despite being on the course to kill one another. I always gravitate towards this book, just like in general, but I think I gravitate towards it a little bit more in the summer. And that's because I just always crave good romance books in the summer, and I just love how the romance sounds in this one because it sounds like it's going to absolutely play with my heart. And I am just so excited for that, and then also just everything this book has to offer because it all just sounds so amazing. And I also love the cover too. Okay, so that is the end of the tag and also the end of today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and answer the question that will be around here if you want to do that. And hopefully I will see you here next time. Bye!